Good morning, my name is Martin Dichgans uh, and welcome um, to the European Stroke Organization Conference here in Gothenburg. Um, I'm here with uh, Professor uh, Pierre Amarenko from Paris. Uh, he's a professor of neurology at, uh, at, at uh, University of Sorbonne in uh, Paris Diderot. And um, we are very excited and we're very excited to hear the results of the TIA registry that uh, Professor Amarenko has been leading and uh, setting up uh, many years ago. That must have been about uh, seven or eight years ago when you... 2009 and we started uh, the enrollment, yes. Yes, that's when you started the enrollment and um, you achieved what very few people achieved to um, first present the results, the one-year results, uh, two years ago. Um, and uh, those results were published in the New England Journal of Medicine and uh, yesterday we had the pleasure to hear the results, the five-year follow-up results of that very impressive um, registry, but uh, rather than me continuing now, we would probably like to hear you and tell us about your registry, what uh, drove you, what made you set this registry up and um, initiate the, this huge cohort. Uh, so the, the, the reason for this registry that is, uh, comes from the, uh, the early uh, 2000 uh, data from Peter Roswell and uh, Clay Johnston showing that the risk uh, of TIA uh, was about 20% at three months. Uh, so uh, following that we developed this uh, SOS TIA clinic in Paris which was a 24-hour uh, available clinic uh, for TIA patients and in three hours we could do uh, the, uh, uh, the workup uh, on these patients. So it was open uh, all general practitioners, uh, cardiologists, uh, diabetologists, uh, vascular medicine doctors uh, or um, um, emergency doctors could send us uh, immediately patients with TI so they had immediate solution to, uh, for the diagnosis and treatment. Uh, and so we, in 2007, uh, both us and Peter Roswell showed that uh, uh, we could cut the risk by 80%. Um, just by an just, immediate workup? Just by an immediate workup, immediate treatment, no delay. And what do you mean with treatment? Uh, treatment is uh, what is recommended by guidelines, yeah. uh, anti-thrombotic treatment, and as you know, and again, this is a Peter Roswell work, uh, this meta-analysis he published two years ago showed that aspirin is very effective in the acute phase. Especially in the very first phase. Yes, in the 12 weeks following the, uh, uh, the uh, TIA or minor stroke, and uh, particularly on dissolving stroke. And so we implemented that, and uh, blood pressure lowering, uh, lipid lowering, smoking cessation, etc. And and we found that, and and after that, we uh, uh, there was uh, new recommendations for setting up uh, TIA clinics uh, within comprehensive stroke centers, uh, and uh, it spread out uh, uh, around the world. And so we decided uh, again with Peter to do this registry and Peter and others to do this registry and uh, the TIA registry was uh, web-based, uh, TIA clinic based uh, in center that accepted to do it uh, and we had uh, uh, 61 centers uh, in Japan, all over Asia, uh, particularly China, Korea, Thailand, uh, Taiwan uh, and uh, also Europe with Germany, uh, with Spain, with uh, many other countries. Uh, um, Czech Republic was also one of the leading And they the all country. saw patients according to the same exactly. standard procedures that, that you had suggested? Or? Yeah, they, they need to have uh, at least 100 TIA patients per year and to have a staff uh, um, looking after these patients uh, immediately whether it was in a TI clinic or an emergency room or another organization, but they have to do that. And what uh, was the time frame for patient inclusion into the TIA registry? So uh, we wanted to have the patient as soon as possible, mm -hmm. uh, so within 24 hours, but uh, uh, we were prepared to, uh, to have uh, uh, some centers that may, and, and, and we also have patients that come, even when you organize like that, you have patients that add their TIA 48 hours or, uh, 
or three days before and then realize that they have symptoms uh, or the general practitioner realize that they, they, this patient may have symptoms of ischemic stroke and then send the patient to the TIA clinic. So we allowed uh, one week, uh, seven days uh, for enrollment. Uh, but 80% of the patients in the registry were enrolled within 24 hours of symptom onset. And those were patients really with a TIA or a minor, minor stroke? Yeah, TIA or minor stroke. And uh, the inclusion criteria was a patient with a ranking 0 or 1, just pragmatic. Mm -hmm. uh, ranking is usually uh, used uh, later uh, to judge at 3 months. But we consider that TIA and minor stroke patients are ambulatory. So if they are ambulatory, you can do a ranking. Uh, so uh, we exclude a patient with ranking two. And uh, within a very short time, you managed to include almost 5,000 patients, right? Yes, uh, we do that. We did that in, uh, uh, in more than 18 months. Mm -hmm. So it was very quick. So thanks to the investigators, you, you said that the registry was impressive. It was impressive because of the investigators. Uh, it, it was, I, I must say that this registry was a, a low-funded uh, registry, very few money to do that, and, and investigator earn a very little fee, you know, like uh, something like 200 uh, euros per patient or 150 euro per patient. It, it was very few money, and they did that uh, and just for love. And, and, and and finally, we made it, and we made it for one year and for five years for most of the centers we had at the And beginning. now maybe you can tell us a little bit about the intervention. So what did the physicians actually do to treat their patients, and what were the results for the first year, after the first year, and for the five-year follow-up period that you now presented yesterday? Yeah, uh, so the... Uh, it's a, point, a very important point, because uh, uh, we, in this registry, it was real life. And real life in, in, pay in uh, with with uh, practitioner in stroke units, uh, and we found that uh, the rate of uh, antithrombotic treatment at discharge and at five years was very high. Um, uh, antiplatelet agents at discharge was ninety percent of the patients. At five years, it was seventy five percent, but uh, it was compensated by anticoagulant, which was. Uh, uh, on the top of my head, 15% uh, uh, at, uh, uh, at five years. I was also so impressed by the percentage of patients uh, being treated with antihypertensives and anti -lip or lipid lowering agents yeah. at five year follow up. Yeah, 70% for antihypertensive agents at discharge and at five years, and also 70% uh, for lipid lowering agents. So the uptake of the Sparkle trial was very good. And even at five years, it was 63%. I think, and uh, because of the uh, uh, side effect of the uh, of the uh, statin uh, agents, but more important is uh, the uh, target uh, we had, and uh, blood pressure uh, was decreased to 132 over 77 uh, at five years. Uh, so it was really uh, well treated to target, and the same for lipid lowering. Uh, we uh, we had an average uh, LDL cholesterol at five years, 92 milligram per deciliter, which is good. It's it's within recommended guidelines. This is within recommended guidelines, yes. and uh, uh, this is uh, this is something I think very important. But still, the event rates were. I mean, they were not extremely high, but can you tell us about the event rates at one year and at five years? Uh, at one year, the event rate was 6.4% uh, for stroke and myovascular death, mainly stroke. Uh, and at five years, uh, it was 13%, 12.9%, with a precision of 1%, with a confidence interval of 1%. On but side. most of those events were stroke cases, really, 9.5%, 9, 9 if I recall correctly. Exactly, 9.5% uh, were stroke patients. And what was very impressive for us when we saw the first time the, uh, uh, the five-year data is that uh, as we know from many trials right now and epidemiological studies, most of the event occurred uh, within the first three weeks uh, after uh, the TIA or minor stroke. And then uh, we had the, the feeling that there was a sort of plateau. 
But in fact, when we saw the, the result at five years, the curve continued to accrue uh, events uh, until five years and in the, with a steep curve. Uh, so uh, we found that half of the events occurred between uh, day zero and one year and half of the events occurred between one year and five years. So this, this time, uh, uh, one to five years, is also very important for stroke prevention. So there's a potential for there improvement is a, in secondary prevention. And there is potential for improvement in secondary prevention because the residual risk uh, on top of this uh, optimal uh, treatment uh, as recommended by guidelines right now uh, is uh, still very high, 13%. So uh, there are room for for uh, for uh, improve to to improve uh, prevention. Uh, in, uh, on, uh, beside uh, lipid lowering and blood pressure lowering, we we also saw a 60% 65% decrease in smoking uh, uh, active smoking. Uh, during uh, the the registry, this is good, but I think we can improve that uh, more. And uh, and therapeutic education uh, is uh, one way to to do that. Um, we we found a an average LDL cholesterol of ninety two milligram at five years could be better. Uh, we are currently running the TST trial. We will be present soon. So, uh, do you think that? Sorry, but do you think that um, it's more now about implementation of guideline treatment, so what we already know about secondary prevention of stroke, or do you think that there is a need to develop um, further secondary preventive measures? Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, on one side, we have to develop therapeutic education to improve uh, what the guidelines recommend. Uh, to, to implement what the guidelines uh, recommend. And on the other side, we have to find other ways to uh, prevent uh, better uh, new events. And the cardiometabolic risk is very important. So if I come back to the 92 milligram LDL cholesterol, on average we had five years. If we had less than 70 milligram, perhaps uh, we, ha we would have a less event. And we are running the TST trial right Which now. And, uh, and, and we will see that because we randomized 100 versus less than 70 milligram. And, in uh, high risk patients. In patients with TIA minor stroke uh, yeah. and uh, atherosclerotic disease on board. Um, this is one, one way. There is another trial, very important, the prominent trial, which is right now running uh, in diabetic patients mm -hmm. with acute myocardial infarction or stroke, uh, the prominent trial. Uh, looking at a, a new uh, um, SPARM uh, activator, uh, which is uh, in the family of the fibrate. Uh, the name is mm, mm, uh, the name is uh, uh, permafibrate, permafibrate fibrate. Um, so we are going to see new trials coming so, uh, up and, and, with and targeting triglycerin lowering, targeting triglyceride, targeting this patient population. Exactly. I mean, I, I think we were all very fascinated to see those results, and from what I understand, the results have been published in parallel in the New England Journal. They came out yesterday. Yes. So people interested in checking out the results and. Uh, you're recommended to look at the paper. You've seen that uh, there's, a, there's a lot of exciting data presented in there. Um, are, are, are invited to check it out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful, uh, Pierre, for you uh, having the time and given us the time to, to perform this interview and having had the opportunity to speak to you. And um, well, Thank you for, to, to the ESO committee for yeah. uh, giving us the opportunity to present this, uh, this data at this particular session. Uh, with uh, such a large audience, uh, and so we were very lucky. We, we are all very lucky. Exciting times. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.